In today's video, I challenge myself to the quickest possible build of a full-size, full-featured foam cutting table with random shit sourced from around the shed, all in under 20 minutes. Ah, uh, we've got another build, but a quick build. Also, Cat Video 3 is coming sometime soon. But today is a practical build. Ah, uh, what practical? Yes, that's right, serious, serious build. No f***ing around. This is gonna save you time and money and energy and carbon. You're gonna, you're gonna get all the carbon. This project is basically the result of me needing to build this anyway. And I thought if I'm gonna be building things, I might as well be sharing it with you guys. Hmm. So a fair while back, when I was planning to build the cooler drone, I knew I'd be doing lots of work with foam for that video and probably others in the future, because foam's pretty handy. You can shape it and sand it and throw stuff at it and just talk to it about your feelings and stuff. So I figured building a foam table cutter would be pretty handy. Looking into it, you can buy them, but they're about $600. Then I remembered I'd seen some videos online where people had made their own. Uh, the King of Random has a popular video on the topic, as well as some other channels. And they're all great builds, you should check them out. But they're pretty involved designs and I didn't want to spend days making that when I had to spend a lot of time making a ridiculous flying cooler. So the challenge, build something that costs less or nothing, is possibly more versatile than the ones I had seen online, and something that could be made in under 20 minutes. Challenge accepted, and you know it's gonna be Turner 81 star. Always keep in mind with my videos, I have no formal training in electronics or electrical stuff or engineering for that matter. So take what I say with a grain of salt and let's go build some things. <laughs> All right, so the first ingredient, well, I figured that would be a table, seeing it's a table foam cutter. A big table was needed so I could slide some full size sheets of foam across it. When you have your table ready, maybe check under it just to make sure that it's a table under there as well. Yep, good top and bottom table consistency here. So years ago, I grabbed this old shop display fixture that was being chucked out because it was full of some handy aluminium square tube. It had these corner connectors that came with it and I'm gonna make use of them too. Looking further into this for this video, it looks like this is some kind of standard system for snapping bits of aluminium together, which is interesting, but it seems a little pricey considering it's fairly flimsy. So if you haven't been bin diving at your local supermarket lately, you might want to improvise something else. But I'm going to use these just because this is going to be a lot quicker. Within the plastic connectors, I've grabbed the closest thing to a right angle that I could find, and I've hammered that into the end of the tube. And then I've also shoved another connector into the other end of the tube, just for a bit more strength. Now, we need to find a square piece of conductive metal that will fit snugly around this square tube. That's too small. That's about the same size. That's way too big. No, that's round. That's a tailpipe. But just when I thought I was out of options, then I noticed the shed roller door track fits perfectly around it. I'm not quite ready to pull the shed down just yet for material. You know, I still have to fix the central door locking in my car, but luckily I'm a material hoarder and I have a fair bit left over from the shed build. With your set square, measure and mark yourself a short bit and then cut that off. You're then going to want to file all the edges of this piece of metal, especially on the inside. Now with the arm you whipped up earlier, you just put that against the edge of the table, then grab yourself an F-clamp and clamp it on. You can probably see now, if I tried to clamp this without the plastic fitting in the end, it would just crush the aluminium flat. This next bit is important. Get yourself a hacksaw and chop away any little bits of bird aluminium out of the corner. So each section of tube doesn't have contact with the other piece. We now have ourselves a hot wire arm with a pretty decent reach, I would say on par with a professional unit. And the slider we made fits and skates along the tube quite nicely. All right, grab yourself a straight edge that you can use to square against the clamped arm. Using that as a guide, I've then marked the table under the end of the arm. With your drill and a small drill bit, we're gonna drill ourselves a hole in the middle of the table. You know, if you're using your dining room table and you haven't asked your parents or wife's permission, they're probably not gonna notice. It's a small hole. In the old box of random electrical wire, I've got myself some figure eight cable, which should do nicely. You wanna use something that's fairly thick like this. You're also gonna need a small extension spring. I didn't really have anything that was small, but I found the cable relief on a headphone jack was perfect. Plus it was shiny, and you know how I love shiny sh 
With your spring, if you don't have any loops in the end, you're going to need to bend some in it so it can actually be hooked onto stuff. I have now gone and put a hole through my slider. Now this actually worked out pretty well for me because this roller door track has this folded lip on it. If you're not working with material like this, you're going to need to work around it somehow. I don't really know how. Maybe just don't cut the phone. What the f am I supposed to solve all these problems? Holy sh! Grab yourself a little panhead self tapper or tech screw. Pre screw that in so you cut yourself a nice little thread. Then pull it out and you can mount the spring onto this slider. We've now got ourselves a piece of roller door scrap with a screw in the side and a broken bit of headphone connector dangling off it. It's been a good day in the Turner shed so far. A good day. Inappropriately filed away in the old wire and cable box, I have myself a spindle of nichrome wire. This stuff's pretty cheap. It's made as resistance wire, so it basically gets hot when current passes through it. It's made of a mix of chrome and nickelodeon or nickel. I don't know, I forget now. Unspool yourself a bit of this wire, and we're gonna thread that through our table hole. Then you just need to kick your tripod, and then twist the wire onto the loop of the spring. We can now get the figure eight cable from earlier and split that into two separate wires. You're gonna need to grab yourself a terminal like so, and then I'm gonna crimp that onto the end of the cable. If you don't have these terminals, you can just strip the wire back even further and twist it into a loop, and it'll do the job. Then under the table, drill another shallow hole next to the first one, but you don't need to go all the way through. If you do, you're probably pushing your luck and your parents or wife are most likely gonna notice. Using a very short self-tapper, I've then screwed that terminal down to the table. Or up, because I'm under it. You know, you get it. I'll flip this shot so it makes more sense. Or, or less sense. Kristen will fix this up. And then attach your nichrome wire. With the other bit of figure eight cable, I've measured this out to reach the top corner of the arm. Cut it, and then I've slapped on another crimp terminal. Just to be clear, this is the other wire, not the other end of the wire we just attached under the table. Different wire. Different wire. Wire. Then screw that terminal into the top section of the arm near the 90 degree angle. Okay, just waiting on the screw to go in. Maybe grab yourself a coffee. Oh, there we go. Again, once the thread is pre-tapped, then take the screw out and put the terminal underneath. On the other end of the figure eight cable, strip this back quite far. Then with an old car battery that you have in storage, which you should have started doing by now if you've watched any of my past videos, grab that and put it under the table. You can also use a kid's bike or scooter battery if you have one on hand. Now, if you wanna connect these wires to a large car battery without using proper battery terminals, just get a couple of cheapo plastic clamps and clamp the wires straight on. As you may have noticed, I didn't worry about wiring a switch into this unit, simply because that'll be extra time and effort, which I don't have. So be aware, as soon as you connect this to the battery, your hot wire should be up and cranking and might lightsaber the shit out of anything that comes in contact with it. Now you can also see the beauty of this slide connector here. The whole top section of the tube is energized, so then you can slide the bracket to any place to adjust the angle of the wire, and when you let it go, it just grips itself into place. For achieving some more extreme angles, just loosen the table clamp off a bit and lay the entire arm over. Finally, using a set square, I've set the hot wire nice and straight and we're ready to give it a test. All right, that works reasonably well. Only thing is the wire isn't as hot as I wanted, probably partly because of the length of the resistance wire. However, I've also realized the spring itself is acting as a resistor, which is an unnecessary waste of energy. A bit like building a cooler drone. To work around this, I tested bypassing the spring with a bit of scrap wire, which was perfect. It now runs nice and hot. But also, with every problem is an opportunity, or a YouTube video. In putting a piece of wire in permanently, I had the idea that if I used an alligator clip, then I'll be able to slide it up and down, which will vary the resistance, and in turn, gives us a simple but effective heat controller, all without having to do lots of wiring and thinking and sh like that. Slide it all the way down and it cranks up the heat, slide it back up and the wire runs cooler. Beautiful, she's cutting through thick chunks now. I reckon foam is on the dinner menu tonight. The only other small problem I had to resolve was the wire burning through the table. You know, that always sucks. 
So I just chucked a glass fuse under the wire to try and insulate it a bit, which seems to have done the trick quite nicely. So had he switched the unit on and off? If you wanted to, you could make yourself a foot controller or something, or you can just do what I do. In the end, how does our crudely whipped up foam table cutter perform? Oh yeah, that's some nice foam cutting. If you're wondering, cutting this is even more satisfying than it looks. If you build this for no other reason, just to randomly scribble cut up some bits of foam, that's some time well spent. But if you're still doubtful about the quality of such a dodgily crafted machine, you know, the cooler drone build worked out pretty sweet, and that had some complex angles and stuff in there. Thank you heaps for watching, and cheers guys for all the support lately uh, that it's come through on my videos and in the comments. Uh, it keeps me going making these ridiculous things. Uh, my name's Craig Turner, YouTube channel is Turner81. Subscribe and click the bell because my videos are sporadic, so you actually need that so you get notifications. Uh, and perhaps check out my Patreon if you might be able to help out on there. That would be great too, and I'll catch you in the next video.